There's, a, there's several ways to produce your domestic hot water. And why don't we break it into just a couple of categories. There's, there's a direct fired or, or directly heated approach, which would be your gas fired water heater, your electric water heater, your um, oil fired water heater. And all of those are a vessel with some heat source, whether in, and they're filled with water, and you you purchase them by their stored water volume, 60 gallon tank, 80 gallon tank, 120 gallon tank, and then there's some some heat heat element. In an electric one, it's got directly in the water, it's got electric elements that warm heat it up. Least efficient way to do it. <clears throat> if you have a gas fired, for for customers who have furnaces. They don't have an opportunity to use the boiler as their water heater, so they'll have, you know, a gas flame in here that that is is either going back to the chimney or directly outside, and they're warming up that vessel, and uh, and that's a very popular way to do it. If you have a boiler, this same vessel, instead of having a combustion source or an electric element, can have a coil in it, and the boiler treats this just like a heating zone. So the boiler gets piped to the two in and out ports of this, of this coil and the coil then heats up from boiler water and heats up the surrounding domestic water. And that's called an indirect fired water heater. One of the nice features, most of, of the standalone water heaters have a limited warranty, limited lifetime warranty. The, many of these of these products are stainless steel construction, very heavily insulated, so that they don't lose much heat, and and a, a very high recovery rate based on the size of the boiler that's connected to it. And most of them offer a lifetime warranty on the tank. There's really no there's no flue pipes. There's no moving parts. It's a kind of a thermos with a a hot water coil in it. And I think the the way, the way to size these products is you have to look at, a homeowner needs to ask, well, what, what kind of water use do I have? Do I have just a traditional shower head that's a couple gallons a minute? Do I have five of these? You know, how many showers at a time can I expect to, to be running? Or they may have a jacuzzi tub, something that has a very fast fill. So when they're talking to their contractor about their water needs, they, the contractor needs to make sure he's asking the questions about you know, how do you use hot water? One of the rules of thumb is the, the, the smaller the boiler, the larger the storage on the hot water heater needs to be because it doesn't have the horsepower or the BTUs to rapidly recover that water. So what we do is we ask about, if we determine their shower use, we can calculate how many gallons a minute they need on, on a typical day, and we make sure that they can draw down this tank and meet those needs, and then the boiler is working to bring it back up over, over you know, 15, 20 minutes. If you have a very large boiler with a lot of BTUs, you can, this can be smaller because the recovery rate is so much improved. Now there's a third method which, which is catching on a lot, and that's called a tankless water heater. And what, what the primary difference is in the name, it, it does not have a storage tank. <clears throat> and I think the thing for consumers to understand, and they're very small, they look like this, maybe half the size, and they have no stored water in them. They have very small passageways in the heat exchanger, and as the water passes through the heat exchanger, it picks up the heat, so it might enter at you know 50 degrees and leave at 120 degrees. So this is the this is the process. But what's important, <clears throat> there's a lot of playing around with the numbers, so to speak. So when when different manufacturers are saying, you know, my product's better than your product, it's important to know, kind of in New England, we can have 40 to 50 degree water coming in from our well or from our from our city line, how hot do we want it to come out to our fixtures? That difference is called a delta T, a difference in temperature. 
you need to make sure that when you look at product literature, you're being realistic about that difference because many of them will talk about a 50 degree delta T. And if we thought about that in New England, that's only 100 degrees out. Or in some cases in the winter, if it was 40 degrees coming in from the well, it'd only be 90 degrees out. And that 90 degrees is not a hot shower. So if you're, if you're ex you know, looking at literature, you really want to be thinking about at least a 70 degree delta T as you're reading it. And wh what, what the manufacturer will show is what is my output? Because there's no storage there, it has to be continuous. The continuous flow through that unit is what? So if, when, when we size this equipment, people are sometimes thinking, why, why does it have to have so many BTUs so be so big? It's in order to produce a 100,000 100, BTU unit will put out about 2.4 gallons a minute. That's one shower. That's one typical shower. So you're thinking, boy, my, my, my boiler for my house is 100,000 BTUs. You're telling me I need 100,000 BTUs just to have one shower running? <clears throat> and the answer is, in this application, yes, because you're not heating up and st storing that big volume of water and then using it. You're doing it as, as you draw it. But there are a lot of advantages if, if you have a if you have a, a household that uses very little water, um, maybe it's a, a, just a couple without, without children, that's a, that's a nice application. It doesn't have a lot of standby loss. It's waiting for flow. It doesn't run until there's flow. When flow goes through it, it turns on, warms it up. When flow stops, it turns off. So, it's, it's, so if they're very efficient, you just have to make sure that, that you don't put that in an application where you need to fill up your jacuzzi tub at five or ten gallons a minute and you only have this. Because then that, what ends up happening is you need this to be much bigger. It might need to be 225,000 BTUs to give you, you know, six gallons a minute. So that, that's a consideration. Anyone that might have a, a, a vacation home that does not want to have this tank warming up and cooling down and warming up and cooling down, that's a nice way to go. So if I'm putting in a new high efficiency boiler, whether it's oil or natural gas, and I need to be thinking about my water heater, is is the indirect your recommendation? Where where do you where do you think? About yeah, it? I, I think there, and, and this is another good kind of when you're when you're talking to a contractor and. Uh, you're hoping to find a contractor that's going to ask questions kind of about your global situation. You know, how do you use water? Um, you know, is it your primary residence? What are, you know, how many people in the house? What, what are, you need to ask a lot of questions to decide if the, if the house requires a small boiler for heating, you want to make sure, and, and there's a lot of hot water use, I would be going in this direction. If there could be a couple showers at the same time or a, or a tub that fills pretty fast, you need instead of taking instead of having a huge boiler you'll have short cycling problems you're going to keep the boiler properly sized for the house and have a tank that has enough stored volume to meet that demand there's also considerations about space there are there are products that combine this technology which we call tankless with this technology which we call space heating boiler they'll put they'll put a heat exchanger in here that can heat up water directly as it's being used and it becomes a terrific application for a single bathroom and a, and a small amount of space heating. So you can have one wall mounted unit that's both boiler that's both heating the space and heating the hot water in one device. What are they they're, call called, they're called combination or combis. Okay. So many of these manufacturers make a couple of sizes of these. So an apartment, a condo, great space saver, but you just have to ask the question, what, you know, how many, what's my water use?